Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and I'm going to make a quilt out of all half square triangles. Now this is a free pattern from Ben Artex. But instead of cutting all of these fabrics, I'm going to use a nice bundle of pre-cuts. And that's going to save some time. So I'm going to have to rework that pattern just a little bit. These arrows are all made with half square triangles. And we put them in columns. Those multicolors do give us that rainbow effect. The pattern does have us buy fat quarters, and that works fine, but a pre cut bundle will work even better. So we'll need to change the size of the squares. The pattern has us cut the squares at four and seven eighths and cut them on half on the diagonal and then sew them together. But I'm going to use the traditional way where we're going to put them together with that line down the center and we're going to be able to stitch on each side of the line and then cut them apart. I have a bundle of fossil fern and it has all of these beautiful rainbow colors in them. So I'm going to be able to choose two squares to make one arrow. Now you can always mix and match them, but I will choose two that are similar in color. To match them, I will need the same size squares. So these are five inches, this will be five inches. So for each arrow, I will need two of the white background fabrics and two of the fossil ferns. Then I will need more fabric for those strips and of course, a backing fabric. To make this quilt the way it is, I will need 80 of my background fabric and 80 of my solid fabrics. But of course, you can always change the size. Make it longer, make it shorter, or even just make a table runner. There are 100 pre-cut squares in this pack, so I'm going to have lots to choose from. So out of this pack, it's going to be very easy to match up two. With those two, I'm going to need two background fabrics. So before I start, I'm going to match up my colors, clip them together, and make 80 sets like this. After I matched up my fabrics and put them together with that background fabric, I did lay them out on a design board. I do want to have a pattern that sort of looks like a rainbow and this is going to help me keep it in order. This is definitely going to take a little bit longer to sew this way than just sewing them all together but it's going to keep the order that I want. So I will be sewing and putting together one row at a time. When we look at this we do see the arrows going up in one direction and then down in the next. So by doing one row at a time, it's just going to make it a lot easier that I do not get mixed up. So that first arrow will be this pile. So let's work on that one. So I've chosen two reds and my background fabric. The squares are all five inches. So I'm going to be able to match right sides together. I do have a line down the center on the back of the white one. Now I'm going to be able to stitch a scant quarter inch on each side of that line. Now you can sew a regular quarter inch and even if you have a generous one that's fine because once these are all stitched we're going to trim them down. So whatever your trimming size is will be fine for all of the blocks. It will just change the size of the quilt a little bit. So let's stitch down both sides. Once those two rows of stitching are done, we're going to be able to cut them apart and it won't matter what angle that is at. So let's just cut those apart. From here I need to decide which arrow is going up and what arrow is going down. We're going to decide that before we do the pressing. So this is how the arrow is going to be put together. For the top, we're going to have the whites coming out. For the bottom portion, we're going to have the whites going down. And that is giving the arrow shape. Now we can have the darker one if there is a decision to make on the top, or it can be on the bottom. 
we can reverse that or we can do one side dark and the other side light. If the fabrics are identical, then we don't have anything to worry about. I'm going to have the darkest, if it is an option, on the left hand side. So I'm going dark to light. From here, we need to decide on pressing. We need to match up these seams right here in the corner. So to do that, it's good that we have one seam going in one direction and one going in the other. So I've made myself some arrows to give me some reference. I've transferred that one row onto a design board and I'm putting those sticky notes up in the corner. Now as I lay out those blocks, I have a permanent reference to how I want to do the arrows. And I'm going to do every arrow identical. So the seams are all going to go in the same direction. This is definitely going to take the guesswork out of it and it's going to keep me in order. Now depending on the size of your seam allowance, we will need to trim these down after we press them. And my design board is just a piece of canvas that you can get at the art store. Once this is pressed, we're going to be able to square this up and establish the size of the square depending on our seam allowance. As long as our seam allowance is the same, we will only need to establish that size once. Because I did a really scant quarter inch, I'm going to be able to get a four and a half inch block. You might get a four and a quarter or a four inch block. It won't matter the size that you trim them down to as long as all of the trimming is going to be the same. Now we can sew our arrow together. I like to sew the two together and then sew that center seam together. And because there's going to be a lot of colors, I'm going to use the thread that will match my background color. With those four blocks sewn together, I now have that perfect arrow. We have dark to light. So I'm going to be able to take this board to my sewing machine and do all of those blocks. I have my arrows all ready to sew together in rows. And I am doing the row with the point coming up. If it was the second row, I'm just going to take these, turn them so that they're pointing down, and then just sew them in the same order. The points are just going different. So we're going to put them together the same. We're just going to switch them depending if the row's going up or down. So I'm going to get all of those rows together and then measure for those center columns. If you are able to trim those half square triangles down to four and a half inches, you're going to be able to finish the pattern exactly the way it is written. If not, you will just need to make adjustments for these long strips that get added in the centers. However, if you don't want to add those strips, it still is a really nice looking pattern. But, of course, we can always follow that pattern and add those strips. To help keep myself organized, I do mark the back of these pieces. So right here in the seam allowance, I've marked a T1, which is top one. So I'm going all the way along. So the very last one, top right hand side, and it is the fifth column. These are just right in the seam allowances, so you don't have to worry about them washing off or being seen. So we do need to add these long white strips and they are cut at two and a half inches in between each one of these columns and on each side. So we have both sides done and those columns. Having those sides done means we've already given the quilt a bit of a border. So there's eight arrows in each column and five columns. The white background fabric that I used is called Pearl Essence Wave. So it has a bit of a pearl color and I really think it showcases this fossil fern fabric. It sort of makes it look like the sun has been shining on these colors, which I think is perfect for a rainbow theme. 
So let's get all of those columns stitched together. Then all we have left to do is a top and a bottom. That top and bottom long piece are going to be made with pieces that are cut two and a half inches and eight and a half inches. And that matches that column. I did have lots of squares that I could choose from because I will need to put some little two and a half inch squares on each of those edges. So I'm going to have a white, a two and a half, a white, a two and a half, and a white. So this is going to match the top and the bottom. Once those are sewn together, we're going to be able to add them on the top and the bottom, and the quilt will be complete. With that top and bottom put on, Always Chasing Rainbows is now complete. This has been a free pattern from Ben Artex, and I'll put a link in the description for you. Now, I did use a five inch pre cut squares to give me a good selection of colors and to speed up the sewing, but you could always use fat quarters or yardage. As a matter of fact, I think this would look great in scrappy fabric. And if you really want to change it up, how about a black background and then having all of those arrows in light colors? It's a fun project. I do hope you get a chance to give it a try. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and I do have a newsletter, all free, under So Very Easy. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.